Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I welcome you all to this 8th lecture of this course that is on lipid nanotechnology. So in this lecture we are going to learn various lipid based carrier system and mainly liposomes and solid lipid nanoparticles and also we are going to see various applications of lipid based nanoparticles. So first we will see what is phospholipids, so lipids are the major class of biomolecules that includes phospholipids, cholesterols and fatty acids. Okay. So, lipids are amphiphilic in nature that means it is having hydrophilic polar head and hydrophobic tail that is non-polar. So, these are the various lipid based carrier system and this one is liposome and this is solid lipid nanoparticles and this is nano emulsion and this is micel. Okay. So, in this lecture we are going to learn all these lipid based carrier system. So, why we are using lipids as a nano carriers for uh, drug delivery application because it is biocompatible and biodegradable and it is having a high loading capacity and it is also having another property like a prolonged circulation and tumor accumulation. So, let us see what is liposomes. So, these liposomes are the smallest round structure okay, and it is made by naturally non-toxic phospholipids and cholesterol and again uh, it can act like a very good drug carrier and also it can carry even plasmids, nucleic acid and anything. Uh, so, that is why it, it has a wide applications in drug delivery. And these liposomes are made up of natural lipids, so it is lower risk of toxicity and it can carry even hydrophobic as well as hydrophilic drugs. So, another important property of this liposome is their exterior lipid bilayer which is chemically reactive and using this property we can tag antibodies and we can target this liposome to the cancer cells specifically. And another important property is these liposomes size can be varied from 50 nanometer to 800 nanometer. So, we can load more amount of drugs, anti cancer drugs or any therapeutic molecule. And another important property is this lipid bilayer is transparent. So, we can use a fluorescent nanoparticles, a fluorescent material and we can use it also for various imaging and diagnostic applications. So, let us see the types of liposomes. The first one is conventional liposomes and next one is stealth. Okay. The steel liposomes is like uh, this liposome with polyethylene glycol. The surface of the liposomes will be covered with polyethylene glycol molecules that is called as steel technology and uh, it can escape from the reticuloendothelial system. And third one is targeted. So, here we can add antibodies or specific ligands so tar to target your liposome to the specific cell okay. that is called as targeted liposome. And fourth one is cationic liposomes. So, here it will have the positive surface charge. So, as you know that DNA as well as your cells are negatively charged. So, these cationic liposomes can easily bind and it can be useful for various drug delivery applications. And the types of liposomes can be classified based on the size as well as lamellarity. Okay. So, the first one is multilamellar vesicles. So, these are typically range in the size between 0 0.05 to 10 micrometer and it is consist of multiple phospholipid bilayers. And next one is LUV that is large unilaminar vesicles. So, here the size is between 100 nanometer 50 to 100 nanometer okay. and it is also made up of single phospho bilayer, phospholipid bilayer and the third one is small unilaminar vesicles and here the size is between 25 to 50 nanometer and here also it is made up of single phospholipid bilayer okay. and this SUVs are prepared from MLVs or LUVs okay, by sonication or extrusion method. And in all types of liposomes, hydrophobic drugs are usually localized within the phospholipid bilayer and the hydrophilic drugs are usually encapsulated within the liposome cavity. Okay. So, inside the liposome cavity we can load the hydrophilic drugs and uh, in the phospholipid bilayer we can load the hydrophobic drugs. And the size of liposomes are determined by the preparation methods. For example, 
if you are preparing uh, by sonication method, you will get SUV that is smaller than 100 nanometer diameter liposomes and if you are using this method extrusion, you will get LUV and if you are using this evaporation method, you will get GUV that is giant unilaminar vesicle that is larger than 1 micrometer diameter. So, depends on the preparation method, the size varies. So, let us see the cellular uptake of different types of liposome, how the cells uptake these liposomes into the cells. Okay. So, these are the conventional and uh, cationic liposomes. So, this will be taken by the clathrin coated particles and it will undergo a endocytosis process. So, this will be uptaken by this endosome and this clathrin coated endosome will reach the lysosome and it will form a endolysosome. So, there it will get degraded and it release the drugs to the cytoplasm. In case of pH sensitive liposomes, so due to acidification of these endosomes, so it will release the drug to the cytoplasm and if you are using the DNA cationic liposome complex, so it will bind to this cell membrane based on the electrostatic attraction, then the DNA will be diffused into the nucleus. And if you are using these sterically stabilized liposomes, so where you are adding this PEG for steric stability and here it will release the free drug and this free drugs can enter the cells by diffusion or it can enter the cells by phenocytosis that is called as cell drinking process and that will go to the cytoplasm and it can deliver the drugs to the cytoplasm. So, let us see the advantages of liposomes. So, it can load hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic drugs and we can easily modify the surface by antibody or some other ligand so that we can target these liposomes and it is having low antigenicity that means highly biocompatible and highly biodegradable. And these liposomes can be prepared by several methods. So, here I will be explaining some simple method that is DRV method, okay, dehydrated and rehydrated vesicles. So, how to make this? Here empty SUV liposomes will be lyophilized in presence of solution of the compound to be entrapped. If you want to entrap your drug or if you want to entrap the fluorescent particles, so that should be lyophilized in presence of SUV liposomes. So, during rehydration, the addition of small volume of water results in liposome with high entrapment efficiency. Here the advantages are, it is a simple method and here we are using the mild conditions. So, we can achieve high encapsulation efficiency for variety of compounds. So, here you can see the DRB technique. So, we can prepare the empty SUV and we can mix with the equal volume of solution or material which should be encapsulated within this SUV and freeze dry that is lyophilize. When you freeze dry until all the water has been removed, then you do the rehydrate in a controlled way. When you add a very low volume like 1 is to 10 of a volume and it will give the very good small size SUV particle with drug loaded nanoparticles. So, other methods are you can use like detergent removal from mixed lipid detergent micelles. So, which leads to LUV with a large encapsulation volume and next method is freeze thaw sonication method. So, in this method you will be having repeated cycles of liposomes freeze thawing which leads to formation of LUV with high encapsulation efficiency. So, once you load the uh, liposomes with your drug, then you have to purify. So, how to purify that? You can follow centrifugation techniques and you can follow dialysis and gel filtration. So, in this centrifugation technique, when you centrifuge your uh, liposomes, okay, which is loaded with the fluorescent dye molecules and uh, you can remove the supernatant and your liposomal pellet will be at the bottom and you have to add fresh buffer and again you can repeat the centrifugation process. By this process, you can get the purified liposomal suspension with your fluorescent nanoparticles or fluorescent dye molecules. And next method is dialysis. So, here you can use uh, this method for purification of all type of liposomes and here we will be using the dialysis bag with the cutoff molecular weight cutoff of 10,000 Dalton and when you add excess buffer solution and you will, you will be dialysing under st stirring condition at 4 degree and you have to replace the buffer uh, every 4 to 5 hours until no fluorescent dye is detected. So, when you do the dialysis, then you will get the uh, only liposome particle loaded with fluorescent dye or fluorescent nanoparticle. Okay. So, third method is column chromatographic separation. So, here we will be using Cephalex G50 that is polydextran beads and uh, 
uh, this molecular weight cutoff is 1000 Daltons. When you use this separatus column, you have to consider two important points that is, the there may be a lower yield, okay. So, this problem can be overcome by making sure that the liposome sample size is not too small or the column can be pre saturated with the empty liposomes, okay. And second thing is larger liposomes of more than uh, 0.4 micrometer may be written in the column, okay. So, these are the problems with this separatus, column, separatus uh, method and these problems can be overcome by using medium or coarse grade of separatus beads, okay. So, before we learn what is solid nanoparticle, let us see some of the other types of lipid based nanomaterials that is, uh, so neosomes. So, neosomes are non-ionic surfactant vesicles, okay and these are widely studied as an alternative to liposomes. So, here the neosomes overcome the disadvantages associated with the liposomes. So, for example, chemical instability and variable purity of phospholipids and high cost. So, these are the drawbacks of liposomes, this can be overcome by the neosomes. So, the preparation method and everything is same for neosomes and liposomes, the only thing is it will be having non-ionic surfactant and these neosomes have enhanced penetration of the drugs and also we can have the controlled and targeted drug delivery using these neosomes. So, next carrier is micelles. So, here we can have the self assembling nano sized collider particles with hydrophobic core and hydrophilic shell and uh, it is mainly used for solubilizing various poorly soluble pharmaceuticals. So, here you can see here this hydrophilic head is facing towards water and your hydrophobic tail is towards inside. So, it is in presence of water and uh, in presence of organic solvent it forms the reverse micelle where the hydrophilic head will move towards inside and hydrophobic tail will be facing towards the outside towards the organic solvent. And another type of lipid based material is nano emulsion. So, here the we can achieve emulsion in nanometer scale. So, emulsion means it is a thermodynamically unstable system consists of two least immiscible liquid phases. So, one of which is dispersed as globules okay and the other one is in the liquid phase and these are established by the presence of an emulsifying agent that is called as nano emulsion. So, let us see what is solilipid nanoparticles. So, solilipid nanoparticles are nanometer size particles with solilipid matrix okay. So, these are oily droplets of lipids which are solid at body temperature and it is established by surfactants and their production is relatively simple process where the liquid lipid oil in a nano emulsion is exchanged by a solid lipids okay. And this process does not require any organic solvent and here we can get this uh, SLN that is solid lipid nanoparticles spherical in shape okay and you will have the solid lipid core and uh, this core lipids can be made up of fatty acids or uh, waxes and uh, the biological membrane lipids such as phospholipids can be utilized as a stabilizer okay. And this solid lipid nanoparticles will be in the size of between 50 to 100 nanometer and uh, it will be remain solid at room temperature and body temperature and this solid lipid matrix is useful for uh, loading your hydrophobic drugs okay. And this lipid matrix is stabilized by the biocompatible surfactants and uh, in this case we can use phospholipid or we can use a lipid PEG that is polyethylene glycol for stabilizing your solid lipid nanoparticles. And we can also incorporate hydrophilic drugs into this SLN using polymers. So, here you can use that negatively charged polymer and positively charged drug. So, it will combine and form this kind of complex and when you mix with the solid lipid matrix and uh, surfactant, so it will form a this kind of structure. So, in this process the drug polymer complex are incorporated into the lipids for SLN preparation and uh, this strategy give rise to polymer lipid hybrid nanoparticle that is PLN. So, there is another type of material that is LPN. So, that we will see what is LPN. So, LPN is lipid polymer hybrid nanoparticles. So, here this LPN uh, exhibit a characters of both polymeric nanoparticles as well as liposomes. Okay. So, it mainly consists three components. The first one is polymeric core. Okay. So, the polymeric core is made up of 
your uh, polymers like PLG or PLA, where your drug will be encapsulated, followed by you will be having a phospholipid layer, okay. So, that is surrounding your polymeric core and which will prevent your uh, encapsulated drug from leakage, okay. And you will be having another outer lipid PEG, so that is your stealth layer. So, if you are having a PEG in your outer layer, so that will make your nanoparticle to escape from the reticular endothelial system and that will increase your in vivo circulation time. So, how to make this solid lipid nanoparticles? Again, we can use the top down approach and bottom up approach. So, top down approach is you can make from a bulk lipid, you can get the solid lipid nanoparticles and bottom is from the lipid molecules, you can get the solid lipid nanoparticles. Under the top down technology, these are the methods, high pressure homogenization, microfluidization and membrane contractor method. And under the bottom up, you will be having emulsification, solvent evaporation and emulsification solvent diffusion. So, out of these techniques, this high pressure homogenization and microfluidization are the most preferred ones because it is easy to make at the same time, it is also uh, industrially most feasible method. So, let us see the difference between the liposome and uh, nano emulsion and lipid nanoparticle. So, here in liposome, the lipid bilayer enclosing an aqueous core, okay. Here it is water. In nano emulsion, the lipid monolayer enclosing a liquid lipid core and in case of lipid nanoparticle and solid lipid nanoparticle, so lipid monolayer enclosing a solid lipid core. Okay. So, what are the advantages of solid lipid nanoparticles when compared to the liposomes and lipid emulsions? So, here in drawback of liposomes are drug leakage, hydrolysis and particle growth and unstable during storage and in case of liquid emulsions. Uh, same like drug leakage, hydrolysis and particle growth and unstable during storage in the lipid emulsions. But these drawbacks will be overcome using solid lipid nanoparticle. Here there is no drug leakage due to solid matrix because we are having solid matrix in the core. So, it will release the drug very slowly and uh, it is stable against hydrolysis of drug and it is stable against the particle growth and also it is having a solid core. So, it will release the drug very slowly for prolonged time and it is comparatively stable during storage. So, let us see the mode of delivery and drug release of SLN. So, here SLN is generally injected either intravenously or intramuscularly uh, to target the organ. So, due to the small size and uh, it can be useful for the systemic body distribution with the minimized risk of blood clotting, okay. And SLN provides a sustained release of drug when it is ad administered subcutaneously. So, let us see the advantages over the conventional drug release systems. So, it combines the advantage of lipid emulsion as well as polymeric nanoparticle and it also overcomes the temporal and in vivo stability uh, which is very important for any nanoparticle mediated drug delivery approaches. And again here the we can load any hydrophilic and hydrophobic drug and carrier is not toxic and again we can have the control release of drug and we can add antibody or anything to target the carrier. So, let us see what is nano structured lipid carriers. So, this is also similar to solid lipid nanoparticles, but here the lipid particles have been developed by mixing solid lipids with the liquid lipids. So, when compared to this SLN, NLC have disordered structure. So, which makes the matrix structure imperfect and creates spaces to accommodate active compound. So, here we can have like a high loading capacity and again long term stability when compared to this SLN. So, let us see the morphology of nano structured lipid carriers and their improvements over SLNs. Here the nano structured lipid carriers are lipid nanoparticles composed of solid lipid matrix immersed in liquid lipid droplets, okay. So, this solid lipid is used as a matrix to immobilize the drug and it will prevent the particles from collapsing with one another and also the liquid lipid increases the drug loading capacity and here you can see the structure in solid lipid nanoparticle it is almost perfect solid lipid matrix. In case of nano structure lipid carrier it is having imperfect lipid matrix consisting of solid and liquid lipids. So, due to this uh, imperfect structure 
okay. So, we can have like a more drug loading capacity in the NLC and also it will prevent the rapid drug release from the surface which is one of the drawback of SLN. So, how we can use this nanotechnology for various uh, liposome based carriers? So, the nano liposomes and nano neosomes are mainly used in the cosmetic industry as delivery vehicles and this SLN and uh, NLC it is also very good uh, drug delivery agent when compared to the liposomes and the NLC have been identified as a potential next generation cosmetic delivery agent and which can provide enhanced skin hydration, bioavailability and stability of the agent. And the different routes of administration is possible using this lipid based carriers. So, it can be transdermal, intravenous or oral or it can be intranasal delivery. So, these are the various applications of lipid based nanoparticles. Let us see one by one. First one is drug screening microarrays. Here solid lipid nanoparticles enable a simple method of surface mediated delivery of drugs to cells from a microarray of phospholipid multilayers and which is encapsulating the small molecules. So, this SLN will be useful for identifying the suitable drug candidate in a shorter duration of time. And next one is for drug delivery application. So, this solid lipid nanoparticle based drug delivery system will be having a prolonged and uh, control release of drug and it can release the drug through diffusion or by membrane fusion that we already explained in the mechanism part. And uh, these liposomes can be useful for cancer therapy. So, usually in the tumor location that it will have leaky blood vessels. So, if your liposomes uh, of size between 200 or more, so it can accumulate in the tumor location and it can deliver the drug and which could be useful for cancer therapy. Next one is we can also use lipid based gene delivery agent. So, when you use that cationic lipid that is with positive charge lipid and you have the DNA which is having negative charge. So, it will combine and form a lipoplex and this can attach to the cell and through endocytosis process it can deliver the gene. So, we can use the lipid based nano carrier for gene therapy or gene delivery applications. And we can also use solid lipid nanoparticles for ocular drug delivery. Okay. So, this SLN will enhance the corneal absorption of drugs and improves the ocular bioavailability of both hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs. And another important advantage of this SLN is it will allow the sterilization process. So, which is a very necessary step towards formulation of any ocular preparations. And it can also act like a vehicle for your vaccination. So, usually the antigens are adsorbed on the surface or entrapped in the matrix of solid lipid nanoparticle. So, which will induce the enhanced immunological response. Okay. And here the particles offer a prolonged and controlled presentation of the antigen to the immune system. So, this SLN based vaccine will have a very good uh, protecting effect against the different kind of infections. So, the next application is topical drug delivery system. So, here you can see the difference between the free drug as well as liposomal drug and the free drug it is entering through the screen and uh, it is reaching the blood supply which will induce the systemic toxicity. In case of liposomal drug it will reduce the irritation and it will enhance the drug permeation and also it will show prolonged residence time and it will reduce the systemic toxicity. So, you can see the difference in free drug there are more amount of drug molecules are going into the blood and here you can see that liposomal based drug delivery it is control and slow release of your drug molecules. And we can also incorporate these lipid nanoparticles into new cosmetic products because it has a very good physical stability and uh, compatibility with the other ingredients and, and these lipid nanoparticles also pattern protected worldwide as lipo pearls or nano pearls for various cosmetic applications. So, in cosmetic it will have a improved stability of chemically unstable ingredients and also it will have a controlled release of active ingredients and uh, it will improve the skin hydration and production through the film formation on the skin. So, another application is high end cosmetic ingredient 
okay so usually the uv rays in the sunlight it will create time and time and dimer formation in your dna so you can see here this is tt bond that is time and time and dimer it is a intra bond and uh, it will leads to damage the cell and also it can cause skin cancer so when you have this t4 n5 enzyme in liposome so that will repair this time and time and dimer damage in the dna and this t4 n5 removes the time and time and dimer and allows dna replicated normally and it will restore the healthy skin conditions so the hydrophilicity and large molecular weight limits the permission of t4 n5 but when we encapsulate this t4 n5 in the liposomes it will enhance the skin permeation and it greater amount of enzymes can be delivered and it can repair the damaged dna so as a summary in this lecture we have learned various lipid based carrier systems and especially uh, liposome and solid lipid based nanoparticles and also we have learned various applications of lipid based nanoparticles so i'll end my lecture here i thank you all for listening i'll see you in another lecture